What's good world, it's your boy Twiz and welcome to 5 Minutes of Twisdom. 5 Minutes of Tips and Tricks to help grow your music brand. In today's episode, we're going to talk about that music sinking. That's right, how to get your music, your beats, your instrumentals, your songs on movies, video games, commercials, all that. We dropping those gems today. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you can get all them gems that I'll be dropping. Season two, we all in, baby. Now, before you even think about pitching your song to these music supervisors, you gotta make sure you have all your ducks in a row. I mean, you gotta have everything on point. And that's all the way down to the creation of the songs. Now, when you're creating music for sync, you gotta think about the purpose of the song you're creating. And a great sync song can be used in multiple movies in multiple different ways. Now, you wanna stay away from things like using pronouns. So instead of say, I love him or I love her, you wanna just be like, I'm in love. Because anybody can love. That's relatable in all types of situations. You can love animals, you can love people, you can love music. Whatever the case may be, you just wanna put, I'm in love. Now, of course, if you have a niche-based thing that you've got going on, like if it's a Christmas movie, obviously you wanna do niche-based movies like that, niche-based songs like that, that go gears towards that, or a Halloween movie, or something that's specific. Now, there are some things that are just specific, but just in general, you wanna create songs that can be used all over. Now in the production part, you gotta make sure that your recording is on point. Like, I'm talking about whenever you record, it can't sound like you're recording in the bathroom. You can't hear your chains jingling and all that while you're recording, nah. You can't do it like your regular songs. You gotta be really professional when it comes to this. Because think about it, these songs, these instrumentals are about to be on the biggest platforms that we consume. Movies, TVs, streaming, you know, big companies. And obviously they wanna put out the best quality. So that starts with you, the artist producer, to make sure that you come up with the best quality. Make sure your mixing and mastering is on point. Because if it's not, you're wasting your time. Once you've ensured that you have great audio, you wanna make sure you have access to a WAV file and an MP3 file. Obviously the WAV file, because WAVs are the highest type of quality that you can have in audio, which is what the music supervisors are gonna want from you. And of course, MP3, you want a high quality MP3 at the highest bit rate that you can. So that way when you stream it, they can hear and feel the vibes before they hit you up and go further in the process of reaching out to you and trying to get the song from you. Now, once all those things are done, you wanna make sure those split sheets are on point. And the reason why I say that is because they all look for ownership because there's gonna be things you have to tweak and do things to be able to accommodate what they may need. Because it's very rare that they might just call you and tell you, hey, we like that song as is. Sometimes you may just have to just take out certain parts of the song. They may not need the ad-libs. They may just want the regular vocals or they may not want the regular vocals. They may only want every other line. Like it can be really complicated in how they request from you. And it's gonna be a lot of back and forth sometimes depending on the project and the vision that they have for these songs. So you wanna make sure you have ownership of these songs. Now, when you work with somebody, you wanna make sure it's easy, accessible to communicate with them because you don't wanna be able to say, hey, I have to readjust this song and now I have to wait on this person to do that. You don't wanna do that. You know, you wanna make sure that it's with somebody that you're able to talk to, that you're able to agree with, partners that you can really get it done. And on the production side, you wanna make sure you own all the different sounds. No samples. Don't sample your music, okay? Unless it's cleared and everything is already worked out. Because the last thing a company needs is to choose your song, to choose your project, to put in their show or their movie or commercial, and then there's a copyright uh, strike or somebody that's trying to sue them because they hear their original copywritten stuff on that platform. Because that's gonna fall on, obviously, the music suit, because their job is to make sure that it's clear, and you as the artist, it's gonna really put a black mail on you because they're gonna say, hey, this person doesn't handle business properly or doesn't know how to handle business properly, and it's gonna make it less likely to work with you. Now, when you're done with all that process to make sure you got the quality audio that you need, you wanna make sure you upload it onto streaming platforms, not YouTube, Spotify, because those are different apps. They may disturb or disrupt the people who are listening. You got ads and having to download extra apps, nah. You wanna make sure you have a landing page or a site to where they can literally click the link and it takes them to a playable playlist where all they have to do is hit the play button and really listen to all the songs you have. Some of the platforms that I would suggest you use is Disco, Audily, and SoundCloud. Why? Because it's really, it's easy, accessible, you can share it as a link, you can create the playlist, 
and they don't have to download anything. And it makes the convenience of them checking out your song that much better for them to use. Another thing you have to do before you start pitching to these music supervisors is do research about them. It makes no sense to just shoot your shot and just throw darts and hoping that somebody's gonna pick your music. Because there's different music genres and there's different music supervisors that like different genres. Each movie may have a different theme or a different feel and your vibe or your music may not fit that. So it makes no sense to submit your type of music to a music supervisor that's not even going to use it. So what that means is you can go find music supervisors almost anywhere. The first and easiest thing to do is look at the end credits of a movie or a show or whatever the case may be, whatever content it is. The credits may list the name of the music soup and their position and maybe other people who may have helped in the music department to bring life to that product. Once you figure that out, literally go on Google and type in their name, make sure you follow them on their social media, follow them on things like such as LinkedIn because that's the real gem, LinkedIn. If you're not on there, you're slipping. Another source to find music supervisors is IMBD, which is basically a review credit website on movies and shows. They literally list everybody who's worked on a particular film or commercial or project, and you can literally take the name, and again, they may have their, depending if you have membership or not, or even on the easy one, they have their contacts, so or you may can reach their business email or anything like, or contact like that, to where you can follow them. Social media has been a great way for me to reach out to these music supervisors by just literally looking at a hashtag, hashtag music supervisors. And the cool thing about social media, there's all kinds of events going on where they may have these music supervisors as guest speakers and things of that nature. So you wanna make sure you join these, these panels, you wanna make sure you join these conferences and these events because that puts you in the room with them. Matter of fact, I ran out into an organization called the Guild of Music Supervisors. Think about that, a guild full of the people that I'm trying to reach out to. It makes perfect sense. And the cool thing about the Guild of the Music Supervisors is they're looking for artists. They're looking for producers. They're looking for singer and songwriters. So the whole being of this organization is to pair the people who create the music and the people who uses the music to put in movies and bring them together. So that way they can just really network and connect. So there's plenty of different ways that you can really reach out to these music supervisors and do research on them. Now you may be wondering, how do I even pitch to these people? Like, what do I even say? Well, the first thing you need to do, and this is almost with almost anything in the music industry, is build relationships. Like I mentioned, you can literally find their information online somehow, some way. Follow their social media, kind of slight stalkerish them a little bit just to see what they got going on. Engage with them. Go to these events that I spoke of earlier and be in the room and then that gives you something to talk about, an icebreaker. Hey, how you doing so and so? My name is XYZ. I was just in the XYZ event and you know, I thought it was really great. You know, something simple like that can really get you a long way when it comes to that. And sometimes, you know, I understand you may want it right away. You want to get your songs on there right now, but sometimes playing the long game could benefit you better because think about it. Somebody who actually has a relationship with you is more willing to do something for you than somebody that you really don't even know. So you may have to take that time, take a few months, take a year or so to really get to know some of these music supervisors because at the end of the day, while they hold a really, really great position and something that's gonna benefit you, they're still people, that's still their job. So you wanna make sure you just take some time, reach out to them some of that. And then out of the blue, you know, you can be like, hey, you know, in the meantime, I got this song that I wanna pitch, maybe it'll be a good idea, here you go. So relationship is always gonna be the number one thing and way that you can get yourself out there and pitch your music. Now, when you're messaging in these music supervisors, you wanna make sure it's short, sweet, and to the point. Hey, how you doing? My name is so-and-so. We have a new single release, XYZ, on this date, and I think it will fit the vibe for your music. You can check out my work below. Here's the link to check out my song. And if you have an EPK, make sure you attach that on there too so they can learn more about you and see that you're all about your business. Now make sure you don't attach music to the email or message because again, they don't wanna be cluttered by all these different things because they get a million emails and amusing, a million submissions just like you upload music on Spotify. It happens every day. But to set yourself aside, you wanna make sure you're a professional and go the route of just being simple and straight to the point. And they'll appreciate that and they'll see that. 
Also make sure you take advantage of the subject line. Do something that's catchy, do something that's not normal. So that way they can see that it's a unique person that's actually trying to reach out to them. And that alone will make them more intrigued to checking out their work, checking out your work and to get your song out there more. Another great way to get your music out to these music supervisors is to upload your music to a music library. Yo, Twiz, what's a music library? A music library is literally what the name says, a library of music. And what happens is a lot of these companies collect these songs from producers, artists, singers, songwriters, all you guys, and they basically market them to the music supervisors and get them to come and check out their library in hopes that the music supervisor picks some of the songs that are from that library. And if you're a reputable library, you're gonna have more music supervisors come in, which is gonna increase your brand. As I told you, ownership is really key. You wanna make sure you own your music, have ownership of all these things because it's gonna be real imperative with these music libraries because they're gonna request a lot of different things from you. They're gonna require to get maybe a sync fee from you. And sync fees can re range anywhere between 20 and 70%, depending on what kind of uh, you know platform they have. Obviously, a more popular music library is gonna charge maybe a little higher fee when it comes to the sync fees. And then, you know, some of them just may do a little slap on the wrist, a 20%, 10%, 15%, you know, to be able to get it. And you're probably thinking, yo, Twist, 20% is a lot. But if you think about it, 10%, 20% of thousands of dollars, it ain't too, too much. You're still gonna eat, you're still gonna get money from that. And on top of that, most music libraries have two different options, exclusive and, and non-exclusive. It's almost like beat purchases. When you get an exclusive contract with the music library, that means you can only upload this song, this instrumental to this one music library platform. Now that sucks because if it's a really good song or really good instrumental and it's not doing well on this particular platform, you can't shop it anywhere else because you literally just signed an exclusive deal with this music library for this particular song and you can't do anything else with it. But on the flip side, you can have a non-exclusive agreement with the music library and you can literally upload it to this platform, to that platform, to that music library, to that music library, that music library, and that music library. But there are still complications with that too. This music library A over here, the song takes off, somebody purchases it, and then they are taking it and it's going to on the show. You now have to worry about the other different websites that you uploaded it to, taking it down and hoping that you don't have a situation where this person uses the song and this person uses the song too. Now you're probably saying, hey Twiz, but if it's non-exclusive, why does that why does that make sense? Why does that why does that matter? Well, obviously because if a music supervisor over here using that song, right? They're saying that they have rights to use this song through this company. If this one has it over this side and they're saying they have rights to use it in this company, it could kind of bump heads. One thing about music supervisors is they don't care who you are. They only care if the music is good, do you have your ownership of your music, and how quick can you get it to them? And how do you have ownership of it? You know, all things that you should have for your music. So at this point, it doesn't matter. Between 2020 and 2021, there has been an emergence of independent artists that are getting their music on these different platforms. Platforms like TikTok has allowed music supervisors to make it easier to find music. If it goes viral on TikTok, hey, they don't care who you signed to. They're reaching out to you and saying, hey, we like this song. How can we get it? How can we put it? This is how much we have to offer you. So it doesn't matter who you are. It just matters if the music is good and that it fits what they're trying to do music-wise. And that's another episode of Five Minutes of Twisdom. If you haven't already, please, please, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and remember, without you, it there's no me, and this is why I do it for. Another episode of 5 Minutes of Twism. It's your boy Twiz. I'm out. Certified.